it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today is the 2nd of January 2019. Happy New Year. And I'm going to just take a quick peek on the hives. I actually peeked in on them yesterday. Today's temperature is probably about 32 degrees. Yesterday was really warm. It was almost about 50 degrees, 49 degrees Fahrenheit. And I checked on the bees, they were all flying, so all of my hives are alive. I could see honey stores in number one hive and number two hive, but on number three, I saw the big cluster of bees, but I didn't see any capped honey. So I made some fondant last night, and I'm going to play some fondant for just some added insurance into hive number three. Fondant, of course, is a sugar source, and it is a dry sugar source. It's kind of like a candy. Uh, when it's this cold, the bees don't really consume syrup. So I'm going to give them some fondant so they don't starve, but all of them are alive. I want to give you a little glimpse. I have these great clear inner covers so you can peek on the bees, see the cluster, and see how they're doing without losing too much heat and without disturbing them. So really, really cool, and I just want to give you a peek. I'm also going to do... Um, I'm also going to do an oxalic acid vapor treatment. Uh, I already treated them in December, I think it was the second week of December, and I was really concerned because I wasn't expecting a high mite drop because I had treated previously at the end of November and into December. I did three treatments using oxalic acid dribble, and I did those in increments about one week intervals to get as much of the phoretic mites off of the bees as possible. And then I did one last one in late December with oxalic acid vapor because at that point the colonies were all broodless. But I had a huge drop, particularly in my number one hive. I would say I would have had a, at least 100 to if not 200 mites that fell onto the bottom boards, which is really, really high and concerning. So. I followed the forms on my bee club here in Rhode Island and many people are treating once again so I'm gonna give them another vapor treatment and yeah call it a day I guess <laughs> but yeah so today's um, so today it's not really a hive check I'm just gonna feed some fondant for added insurance and then treat with oxalic acid okay all right let me give you a peek inside the hive so you can see the clusters so let me show you what I've done for the winter treatment for this year now this is just tar paper that I've wrapped around the hive. There's no rigid insulation this time. And this is my telescopic cover. Let me show you what's underneath. So under here is a Man Lake winter inner cover. And this is an option for feeding syrup later, but I have this reversed for winter. And beneath that, I have some rigid insulation to prevent condensation from happening onto the bees really important we don't want the bees to get wet and beneath I have a clear inner cover and you can see the cluster of bees down here which is wonderful so there's also ventilation in the front and in the back so let me show you what the bees look like here they are the ladies are alive and well can you see them it's hard to see there's a bit of condensation just a bit on the top but no moisture no dripping good sized cluster right there now, I don't know if you can see that, but in there, you see how those cells are empty? None of that is capped. So for added insurance, I'm going to give them a bit of fondant. But the girls look well. Love this clear inner cover because the bees don't fly out and buzz me, but it also keeps in the warmth while I do my little adjustments here. So I'm going to give them... So, so beneath this inner cover here, I have a one and a half inch shim, which you can see here, which will give me enough room for fondant. So I put that on right before I close them up for the winter. So what I'm going to do is just carefully shimmy this fondant. So I made this fondant last night. It's just a mixture of sugar and corn syrup. And I'm going to place this upside down the whole paper plate right on top of the cluster of bees and they'll just nibble that up as they need it. So I'm going to do this slowly and gently. I don't want to crush anybody. Sorry, girls. Just 
to wiggle it so they get have a chance to move. Just gently place that right on top. And that's it. I'll check on them in a couple weeks and see how that fondant was gobbled up. Okay. Now here's a look in my number two hive. This one was a split from my original mother hive, which requeened successfully and was pretty small coming into winter, but it's still alive. And there you can see the cluster right there. Hope you can see them with the glare. It's so great. I really love this inner cover setup so I can see the bees. And in this hive I can see that there is still some capped honey in these top frames. But I'm going to give them some fondant anyways, just again for some endurance. Go in there quickly so I don't lose too much warmth. Finally, number one hive. This was my main hive that overwintered from last year. It was my largest, but it swarmed at least twice and was weakened. And it is now the smallest hive. But it too requeened successfully. I think it did it multiple times. And this is significantly smaller. Now, I hope these girls overwinter. So there are some bees on this wall here, but I think the cluster has gone down a bit. There are some bees up here, but so there are some bees on this inside wall here, but the cluster is down here, and they're about let's see on four frames here, and they're a little bit further down. But they're alive, and I do see capped honey, so there still should be in sufficient stores. But, again, I'm going to add some fondant, just in case. The hive that I saw significant drops in mites when I treated in late December. Which is worrisome, because I thought I was on top of it, but I guess those three dribble treatments in November weren't enough. Here you can see the Swiffer pads that I used to collect small hive beetle. There's one, two, three, four, five, six beetles in there. Caught a couple bees as well, but sacrificial bees. Okay. So this is the bottom board, and as you can see, this are the crumbs of the wax when the bees are consuming the honeycomb. So you can kind of see where they're clustered. They're clustered in this front corner here. And this is diatomaceous earth, which I removed. But hopefully you can see, right, just even in this corner, the number of mites that dropped from that last vapor treatment. Significant, right here. You can't see them as well now in here because they're covered with these honeycomb shavings, but just in this area alone can give you an idea of how many mites were in this hive, even with all that treatment. So fellow beekeepers in Rhode Island have been reporting worrisome numbers of Varroa as well. So at least I'm not the only one. This may be due to late season robbing. I am not really sure. This is just my second year after all. Actually coming into my third year. So I left because I had to go inside from it. Now you can see the cluster a little bit better now. Uh, there's some con a little bit of condensate glare. Let me get, yeah. So now you can see the cluster better. 
population isn't as small as I thought. Great, so about as large as number two hive, which is where it was when we started the season. So that's reassuring. See that? So this too, I'm going to slip in a little bit of fondant. You can actually see them through the top entrance right there. Great. So before I do any treatment with the vapor, I'm going to tape off both top entrances. And close up the bottom entrance. That'll keep the vapors in. Next, I'm going to wear my respirator. You must protect yourself when using oxalic acid vapor. Make sure you have the correct cartridges that are rated for organic acids. Okay. Next, I have my board. Wearing protective gloves. So I'm going to put this modified bottom board there and I'm going to slide. I'm going to slide my vaporizer into the back like this. I'm going to turn it on for two minutes. Allow that to vaporize. Keep the hive closed up for 10 minutes and then open everything back up. And then we'll be done with treatment. So, a hive this size, I'm only going to use one teaspoon. It's a half treatment. If I'm doing my number three hive, I'm going to do the full treatment, which is two teaspoons of oxalic acid. Make sure you wear gloves. Make sure you have glasses. I almost forgot. Make sure you have eye protection as well. So, eye protection, gloves, respirator. Why can't I open my jaw? This is stupid. This is about half of this tray. One. This is a quarter teaspoon, so it's four of these. Set my timer for two minutes. You can see the vapor coming out here. So it is indeed vaporizing. There it is coming out the back. Oh, you can see it coming out the front as well. Oh, two minutes up.
Do a little bit more vapor there. So we're going to leave this butt buttoned up for about five minutes. And we're going to do the same thing to the other two hives. so that's it for january 2nd 2019 happy new year i treated all three hives with oxalic acid vapor and i gave them all a patty of fondant i'm going to come back after i stop at the um, bee supply store and get some bee pollen patties that i'm going to place a little bit in each hive just in case they're making any brood and they might need some added protein. I'm just going to give them just a tiny piece of pollen patty, but that'll probably be in the next couple of days. Just slip a little piece in there just in case they need it. Don't want to put too much in there because if there are hive beetles, although this time of year I don't know if there are hive beetles. At any rate, I don't want to give them too much, and if they eat it all up, I'll just replace it. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in for yet another bee vlog. This is Emmy coming into my third season of beekeeping, but there's still lots to learn. Okay, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>